Hi, I'm Shelley J. Whitehead, and I'm joining you on the Online Prosperity Show, and I want to share with you one of my real amazing formulas called the four C's, which we can apply to any relationship, an intimate relationship, and it's also something we use in business. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the relationship, dating, and bereavement coach, Shelly J. Whitehead. Shelly, how are you doing today? Uh, it's great to be with you. I'm really good. I'm almost, yeah, midday. We're well, not quite, but 45 minutes off. Midday in London. And uh, yeah, it's a great day. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, Shelly is tuning in from London as we speak, and apparently it's hot there. Now, she has personally dealt with a lot of loss in her life. Um, first of all, it was a loss of a partner to cancer, and then she all experienced um, the sudden ending to her second marriage. Now, uh, we all know how hard it can be to work through all of this pain, um, you know, of endings and trying to rebuild a life that feels happy and connected. Now, obviously, we bring out experts like Shelly here to help you out. If you're going to be starting out in your business and you might have been going through something that might be personal that you can't share, um, you know, with either your clients or with your employees and people like Shelly are uh, the ones that you can turn to. Now, obviously, Shelly has traveled from South Africa and we're talking a little bit earlier on. She lived in Germany for quite a while. So she's quite well versed with any part of the world and she works with clients from New York and she's going to be having clients in and around um, Australia. You might be wondering, why would I need to connect with somebody who never, who is not in the same country? Now, Shelly, You've traveled around, you've gone through all of this, and you have become a self-made expert um, in all of this. Plus, you also have certifications in NLP, and um, you're an internationally accredited um, coach. Tell us a little bit about yourself that I didn't put together in this introduction here. Oh, goodness, you said so much. I'm very much of what I do. So, uh, yeah, I work with clients all over the world. I'm well-versed with cultural change. Um, a lot of my clients are in Europe, in the US, um, actually Australia, New Zealand as well, um, South Africa, of course, because I'm, you know, I, I know a lot of people there and they know me. Um, I love what I do. So not only am I accredited in what I do, um, as in being a trained coach, I specialize in relationships. I've been trained to work with couples. Um, I've lived what I do. Um, you know, losing my first husband to cancer and then um, going through the ending of my second marriage, you know, kind of being dumped, which in itself was a bereavement process. And why I also work with corporate clients uh, or clients in the um, corporate and executive um, arena is because when they may discover that a partner is suddenly terminally ill or they're really ill or someone's been having an affair or perhaps, you know, the child is on drugs and some, some trauma in the family, it almost rips the heart and the soul out of that family unit and the individual. So they're trying to show up at work, but they are not productive and they're not coping. And often they're masked. And, you know, behind the mask is meltdown. And what I do is really help the client or the person to manage the meltdown inside, to be productive and to take the next smaller step and the next smaller step each day so they can keep showing up and not fall into um, a deep depression or start using um, self-medicating, they'll say, instead of using self-medicating with alcohol, drugs, um, sex is also used as a self-medication tool uh, for people go avoid those behaviors that would uh, take them further down into this pit of despair and that zone of negativity absolutely well thank you so much for all of that because at the end of the day um <clears throat> the people that are 
tuned in in particular to this show there are people that are starting and scaling and growing a business and um as an entrepreneur when you're starting a business all the concentration all the effort you really want to put it to your work right and then maybe our spouses might feel um left out now how do you encourage maybe before it's even happened how do you encourage entrepreneurs to strike that balance so that they don't end up um, you know, with um, maybe a divorce in their hands while they're trying to build their business or being cheated on, like you've mentioned? Yeah, uh, it's a great question because having a new business, and I've been, you know, 12 years ago, I was a new business owner myself in this field. It's like having a new baby. Um, you're just one person managing so many things. Uh, so here's really the key, that the quality of our lives depends on the quality of our relationships. And um, if we are in a marriage or a partnership, um, we need to also safeguard that relationship. So it needs time, it needs input. Uh, there's one book I use a lot in my practice when I'm working with couples. It's called The Five Love Languages by Dr. Gary Chapman. You're probably familiar with it. Absolutely. And um, so you know, whatever religious denomination one is, it's a great book because he identifies five key love languages. So they are physical touch, um, <clears throat> excuse me, acts of service, uh, affirmation, affection, and buying gifts. Of course, if you have a love language of, you know, your primary one, there are normally two that are quite close together, but say your, your two, your two, kind of higher scores on that would be quality time and affection and your partner has a love language of affirmation and buying gifts you clearly have different love languages so that's where you are and that's where your partner is in order to understand what makes your partner feel loved best they do the quiz you do the quiz so that you can pay attention to one another's love languages because that's the first step if you're feeling loved and you're giving your partner what they need uh, be it quality time or buying those little gifts uh, these you're meeting something that's vital and uh, it's about keeping that connection connection is eye contact connection is discussion um, and then obviously every couple does need time together I always say you know we make time for eating we make time for exercise we make time for our business but we don't schedule in time for loving so schedule time for loving um, whatever it looks like for that couple absolutely so you know in as much as you're working to build that business and um you know trying to satisfy your clients you shouldn't leave home um unattended as well you should actually be scheduling it as, as you're saying that now you mentioned something that is very important, especially when it comes to uh, building up a business and actually making sure that it's, it's sustainable, that the quality of our lives is heavily dependent upon the quality of the relationships that we have. Now, does that translate then to relationships with our customers or relationships with um, the people that work around us? Ah, I'm glad you asked the question because I'm going to give you one of the formulas I personally work with. It's called the four C's. Um, in order for any relationship, be it your intimate relationship with your partner or with your children or in the workplace, it kind of comes under the umbrella of the four C's. The first one is chemistry. Um, there's got to be that feeling. Whether you're working for the company, you know, their mission statement, their values, whatever, the You've got to have a chemistry. It's what makes that relationship unique. Um, next, it's about compatibility. If you and your partner, you and your company, or you and your child have different values, it's never going to work. So you've got to appeal to someone's values to get their buy-in. Um, but if it's in an intimate relationship, you've got to have the same values. You know, I use the example, if one is into wheatgrass, which is a health substance, and the other one's into cocaine, you clearly have different values. If you're into recycling and really take care of the planet, and the company um, is into fracking, <laughs> uh, you have different values. So you've got to share your highest values. The next one is about connection. This is why relationships break down. 
um, all relationships will break down because of a lack of connection. Connection means I feel safe with you. I trust you. There's a sense of belonging. We're a team. You've got my back and I've got your back. It doesn't break down because of the fourth C, which is communication. Once connection breaks down, communication goes. People stop connecting. They stop communicating. They are avoidant. Um, they talk to other people instead of the person involved. So those four C's are very important in all relationships. Absolutely. This is actually remarkable in as much as <clears throat> a lot of people take for granted the people they talk to on the phones, the people that they speak to every single day, and the people they try and sell onto um, you know, their products and services. So if they haven't created chemistry, none of that is going to happen. I'm, I'm just going to ask you to unpack that one a little bit because chemistry is really... Um, if you ask me, has a lot to do with the intimate type of connecting with somebody. Now, say I'm trying to sell services to somebody else. How do I then inject that chemistry so that we transact um, in, a, in an amicable way so, um, and, and everybody gets a win-win situation? I'm sure you've heard that people don't buy products, they buy people. It's about rapport. And there's an intuition involved um, initially when you meet people. It's kind of, oh, I really like you. Um, I feel I can trust you. Um, you are more interested in me than in selling me something. Um, when, when somebody approaches you with that hard line sell, uh, it's very off-putting because they haven't developed a rapport. They don't know anything about you. So you really got to get to know your customer and build a relationship because people buy people. Absolutely. Now, you also mentioned compatibility. How do we know if this customer is the one customer we really want to work with? Some customers you really want to let go, but that's where your bottom line is coming from. That compatibility um, aspect, is there anything that shows you while you're dealing with a customer that this is the person that maybe you did mention values and things like that. I just wanted you to expand on that a little bit. Okay, respect, um, appreciation and gratitude. And if those are your values and your customer or the person you're dealing with lacks that, um, it's not a good match. And we work from one of two places. Uh, I always say in all relationships, one is love and the other one is fear. So it could very well be that a lot of your income is coming from the one client, but they don't respect you. They're not appreciative. There's no gratitude. It's demand. Um, there's fault finding. There's a lot of criticism that drive a hard negotiation. Um, and, you know, really one can feel backed into a corner. Um, start looking for new business because the one question I always ask myself before I do anything, um, and I use this also as, as you know, part of my coaching, is before I eat it, buy it, think it, commit to it, I say, is this loving to me? So maybe we work from fear or we work from love. And if we're asking ourselves that question, is this loving to me? Um, when we are consistently... Um, dealing with a customer or person in our lives we respect is not there we appreciation and gratitude aren't there and um we keep you know kind of investing 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 but we're not getting the returns we really want and it's not just about financial returns it's about the returns of you know those values uh whatever we invest we must get good returns um so yeah if it's a customer relationship or an intimate relationship if the returns aren't great, we really need to think about it very seriously. How do we turn it around? If it's not, if we're not able to turn it around, then we should leave. Absolutely, I know a few customers that are going to be fired after this uh, talk today. <laughs> now, well, hopefully, they can be turned around. <laughs> <laughs> Still on um, the four C's there, because I would think that oh. it's easy for us to just, you know, um, really look at this because it's 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 juicy. You've travelled around the world so to speak you've been to germany you've been to you you are from south africa um fellow <laughs> fellow African. country mm -hmm. um 
And um, now you're in the UK and you mm -hmm. go back and forth, um, you know, to Germany visiting and, um, you know, enjoying. You've got customers in New York and now you're speaking to somebody in um, Australia. There's a lot of connection happening with different uh, time zones, cultures, mm. people, creed, mm. color, and everything else that comes along with it. Now in business, how does one put it all together just like you have and what, 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 what needs to happen to, for somebody to be able to um, be amicable while connecting with so many different people in so many different time zones? Listening. One must truly listen and be connected. So I work with people face to face um, in my consulting room and I work with people um, as I'm speaking to you on different platforms, you know, my Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever it might be to work with a client. Um, I need to assess what your needs are and also listen very deeply underneath to what your fears are or what your beliefs are or your limiting beliefs um, around something. So I listen very carefully and I keep connected with my eyes. Uh, so I'm learning a lot about you and your values and what you say to me. Because if I'm trying to get a point across, but I'm truly not listening, you're going to pick that up. Uh, why are you going to trust me? Are you going to feel connected? Absolutely not. Do you feel safe? No. So why would you buy from me? And um, there are times I stretch my clients. Uh, I'm thinking of some clients I've been working with in New York. And um, one of them is wanting to get into dating because she really wants uh, to get married. At the moment, I have nine clients getting married. Um, so it's from, you know, not having a date to marriage. And she didn't want to go online. But she's agreed to go online because she's putting the energy out there. And as I said to her, do you trust me? She said, yes. She wouldn't be going into a new process if she didn't trust that what we were do doing would keep her safe and that she would have me kind of holding her hand through the process. So feeling safe and trusting someone comes from connection. And connection is about truly listening to what this person is saying and also hearing what they aren't saying. Does that make sense? Oh, somewhere along the line, I think we've lost the sound. Which, which then, yeah, yeah it, it actually makes a lot of sense. It then segues into um, the last bit of the four C's, which is communication, because you've mentioned mm. if you're going to be listening, and you're going to be attentive and also, um, you know, really, really, you know, being involved with somebody who is, you know, speaking directly to you. That mm. then creates that trust, which yeah. is from what I've heard is the bedrock of all relationships that are, um, can be formulated. Right. So obviously if you're a good communicator, then you can express your feelings and it, 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 it then translates to the other person right there. Now, Shelly, we could sit here and you could tell us everything that could make our businesses function in a way that would leave us connected, um, you know, and, and have a lot of chemistry with our customers. How can people get more of this stuff that you are uh, teaching. I do understand you've got a few uh, products that you have on your website at the moment and stuff that people mm. can, can contact you. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you? Um, through my website, they can send me an email. Um, I will pick it up um, and respond to them. Um, I run different workshops and different courses. I've been running the creative visioning workshop always in person in the UK, I'm developing um, a kind of virtual space where I'll be able to run it um, virtually um, to help clients to develop their vision for next year. I always believe, you know, I start in um, October, November, December and January because um, I have a very specific group um, that I've been running for three years, a women's group. So I start with them in October to get clear about that vision for 2019. So when we're starting a year with a beautiful vision, uh, we're more likely to accomplish and to create. Um, so yeah, that'll be a virtual one. Um, I have different packages available uh, to, to work with clients. 
So be it that it's a four set package, an eight set package, or a VIP package, they're all quite different. Um, and I have a product available on my website at the moment. Um, if people want to get over a past relationship, kind of cut those ties that bind, they can download that. There's a new product in development. We're just waiting for the designer to finish her bit there now, um, which is for broken hearts. Um, and there's a book being edited. Uh, specifically for women entering back into the dating world again after loss. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. If, there we go. if mm. people come to your website, they're definitely going to leave with a handful. I'm going to be putting uh, all the links that you've uh, mentioned right at the bottom here so that, um, mm -hmm. you know, people can actually enjoy um, this. Now, obviously, there's quite a lot that we could, um, you know, uh, unravel with regards to communication. And this is the basis of what actually makes a business, whether it's your personal life or it's actually um, your professional life. Now, what what sort of last words would you leave, um, you know, for somebody who is maybe studying out there, their relationships are in a mess and they're also trying to, you know, stand out in public and be that business person that, um, is creating products for other people. What, what, what sort of advice would you, um, you know, give somebody like that if they walked in front of you today? Um, there's probably what I would call rule number one that I work with um, in my own business and with all my clients. They all understand that we have to apply and must apply and we will apply. Rule number one. Um, it's called stop being defensive. If you want to have good communication with anybody, stop being defensive. It's going to change your life. It's very easily said and it's not easily done. The minute we go, you always and never were being defensive because there are four communication destructors. Defensiveness, blame, criticism, and that passive-aggressive stonewalling where you actually just block communication um, dr. John Gottman identified this quite some time ago um, in what he called the love laboratory he could tell within a few minutes whether a couple would stay together or not but if there is that defensiveness um, a relationship is not going to work be it in business or an intimate relationship because People will pick it up. When we are emotionally responsive to one another, that's what makes communication work. And that will go back to what I said earlier, to really listening and to really seeing the person in front of us. Absolutely. And feeling safe. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Now, I think if we go any longer, you'll be sending us a bill because of the wealth oh. of... No <laughs> <laughs> no lovely. Really lovely speaking to you. Absolutely. Now, obviously, if you're watching this show right now, I would encourage you to jump on and follow Shelly because obviously the people that we're going to be demanding money off of are human beings too. They need to be spoken to. They need to be loved. They need to be cherished. So if you're not going to be doing that, then that means you're going to be spraying and praying with either your marketing or with your sales, and it's all going to be falling on deaf ears. Now, as we've heard, Shelly creates programs and she's writing books and also services that she has combined all of these skills and her experience um, to become a bereavement and a relationship and dating coach with unique neurolinguistic programming uh, techniques and also hypnotherapy that when combined together is all you become an explosive human being that communicates and can influence a lot more people that are around you. I know we're here to live, we're here to learn and we're here to contribute and Shelly has done her part. I hope you have learned um, a, a thing or two and if not, just um, follow the links that are at the bottom there and make sure that you follow Shelly and learn how to communicate with those that mean the world to you. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in. And Shelly, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. I wish you well. Absolutely. Thank you.
right. Now, whatever you're going to say from now on, Canon will be used against you in a court of law. You know that, right? Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff.